headaches, the fear of death, or the calling upon your life. Remember this, it is Jesus who empowers you to perform your calling. It's not based on the restrictions mankind evokes upon. I'm going to discuss the first supernatural happening in the book of Revelation, one that everybody will become acquainted with, whether they believe or not. You, you all do understand that we've come into a time, <clears throat> and it does not matter if a person believes in supernatural things or not, they're going to experience them anyway. There, you are deciding right now what side you're going to be on, a recipient of those supernatural things, either as a child of the living God, standing in truth, not standing in yourself and what you think a child of God is, but through a full submission of who you are to him to relinquish your way of life for his will. Or you're going to stand against him and these events will be a witness against your life. And believe me, I wouldn't want to stand against and let those events be a witness against my life. We're also going to, because we're, we're closing out the sixth seal, but we have to back up. We have to back up, and I'll tell you why, in prayer. When I was in prayer today, something stood out to me in the spirit. And of course, I, I would naturally say that it likely stood out in other people well before me, right? I'm just another person speaking, I truly am. And I happen to have the microphone and you happen to be listening. But this stood out to me concerning the hearts of men, concerning the hearts of those who belong to the Lord. Even the young ones that are coming in, they are coming into the fold. They're waking up. Their eyes are opening up for a reason. For a reason. And for a lot, it's not simply the events of the world, terrorism and things of that nature, but they're being woken up spiritually. They have an awareness that is beautiful and it's in the fifth seal those that reside under the altar and it stood out to me in prayer i'll tell you why if you go to revelation 6 chapter 9 or, or um, chapter 6 verse 9 with me <clears throat> i want you to see this yourselves and we've read this many times and i'll read it again and when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Their souls were crying out. You know what's the difference between you crying out and your soul perpetually crying out. When I was in prayer, I perceived something. I didn't perceive before. Not before. But I began to think about the multitudes of people out there in various circumstances. Right? Because we've had, uh, like, Istanbul. The bombings in Istanbul. The suicide bombers. Innocent bystanders. That have become victims of that, right? And yes, everything is appointed. And we have many people that are falling to terrorism, accidents, abuses, things of that nature. So many people are dying every single day. But what I'm discussing tonight has to do with you, specifically you, the believer in Christ. You're waking up because you're noticing the evil in the world. And your soul is crying out. Because you truly are saying in your soul, how long will it be, Lord? This is in your soul. How long will it be? In fact, you gather strength one to another, one from another, to make it through to the next day and next hour. You seek encouragement from your brothers and your sisters and the word of God. You come into the assembly that you may gather your strength again, but your soul is still crying out. How long? Oh Lord, even for those of us who have a pretty strong walk, right? I mean, we're determined to do what we do. Even we cry out in the soul, how long does this, is this going to continue to happen? <clears throat> you know what? It's a, it's a, your soul, while your soul is crying out, you're also determining who you are. Let me tell you how. When you cry out like that, you're truly in the soul, disturbed by what you see. 
you have perceived true evil is what has happened. And when you see true evil, you know there's no good outcome. There's no enjoyment. You're finding your life being spoiled because these things that are happening in the world, the, what you perceive as unjust, you're seeing it all the time. You're seeing a suffering within a lot of people. You're seeing the body of Christ suffer, but trying to cover it up through a smile. You're perceiving this, you're perceiving the truth. And you're saying in your soul, how long? These same individuals that are underneath the altar, their souls cried out while they were on earth, the same thing. It's a difference between you crying out from thoughts triggered by emotions, your environment and everything else. It's a, it's a, it's a big difference between that and your soul crying out. Your soul will continuously cry out for things, a deep yearning for things. I know what most people talk about. You know what you guys talk about your emails? Do you know why a lot of people in the body of Christ initially they want to date in the body of Christ? Because they too are asking the question, how long is it going to be? These same ones underneath the altar are you. Because your soul is crying out and you're still alive deliver you to the courts and you will be flogged in the synagogues and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them the gospel must first be preached to all the nations when they arrest you and hand you over do not worry beforehand about what you are to say but, whatever, but say whatever is given, given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but it is the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. And as we look at this today, it should serve as a reminder to all of us that in reality, this world is not our home. We are simply aliens and strangers here and that we are involved in a great invisible warfare there is spiritual warfare taking place all around us between God and between Satan, between light and darkness, between the truth and between error. And it will all come to a cataclysmic conclusion in the time of the tribulation. We must not be preoccupied with the things of this world. We must be setting our mind continually upon the Lord in heaven and not upon the things of this earth. If we are living for the things of this world, we will not be prepared and we will not be ready at the time of the fulfillment of these things. And so he begins with this call for the alertness of the believers. We need to have our spiritual eyes open. At the time of this fulfillment, believers will be delivered up to the government officials and will be publicly flogged and beaten and whipped and many of them unto martyrdom and unto death. No wonder, he says, be on your guard to be ready so that your confidence is strong in the Lord when such a time of tribulation would come upon the scene. He says, for they will deliver you to the courts. The very same word is used in verse 11 when he says they will hand you over. What we obviously draw from this is that it will become a crime, a capital crime, to be a Christian. And it will become a crime worthy of death 
to hold to Christian values in a godless society. And religious freedoms will be removed as it relates to Christianity. Mark it down. There is no other implication to draw from this. To be a Christian and to stand for Christian values in the last day will be a punishable offense in the courts that will lead even to death. And do, not, do we not see before our very eyes the changing of a culture and the changing of a society before our very eyes? It would not take very much more altercation in the times in which we live than to see these verses fulfilled in the immediate future. The one thing that will not be tolerated in the last days is to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this should sober up every one of us here today that I need to set down deep roots in the Lord Jesus Christ before these hard times come if I should be living in that last generation. The real issue that the world has with us is Christ. The real hatred is towards Christ. And we who bear the name of Christ, and we who preach Christ, and we who preach the exclusivity of salvation in Christ alone, and we who preach the Ten Commandments and the morals that are laid out for the family and the home, we will become public enemy number one in the world, and the reason will be ultimately because of Christ. Christ is the stumbling block. Christ is the rock of offense that causes the world to be offended. And because we simply speak His message, they will come and arrest us. You're seeing the events take place, specifically the evil that men are doing, right? The divisions and the parties within America. The racism that's building in various nations. And you're saying, how long? You see, those who are crying out in the soul saying, how long, O Lord? How long? You truly do desire for the goodness of your Lord to be in the earth. And that's a beautiful thing. But for the soul that does not cry out, well then, there are some things to sort out. Right? And it continues to say this, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now, we have to examine this. This is also most of you. Let me tell you how. Some of you have gone through things when you were a child. You were abused physically were abused right many of you have been many of you were young when unfortunate things took place in your life unfortunate things you did not have your vengeance for that and you really didn't want the person to die for what they did <clears throat> but you did seek in your soul a type of justice for the event Yes, you've moved on and moved past it. But then you see the same thing happening that happened to you in other people's lives. And yet you say again, how long? The government of Finland has now told its citizens to prepare for the worst. Now, that's the same terminology that is being, uh, was also released by the Czech Republic government. We have somebody here from Finland. Doing? Can you help us there, Finland? Prepare for what? What does it mean by prepare for the worst? Are we talking war? Since Russia is very active and moving troops all along the borders, or are we preparing for a biochemical they say they disaster? Have, they have no clue. See, that's what—that's my whole point. God bless you guys in Finland, and I'm glad you're watching. Nobody has a clue. The governments of Europe are all telling their citizens to prepare for a catastrophe. That's what Angela Merkel says in Germany. Uh, prepare for the worst. That's what the Czech Republic have told their citizens. Prepare for something uh, 
for a disaster, but nobody will tell them what they're preparing for. And here's what's unbelievable here in the United States of America. Our media is not even discussing this. It's not even on the table what it is that Europe is preparing for. I mean, they're ignoring it. It's all about trash Trump 24 seven and Hillary's corrupted emails and the corruption is getting higher and higher. And, uh, and so, I mean, it's unbelievable that we could have the, the continent of Europe hunkering down. And oh, by the way, there is bunkers that they started building bunkers in Russia in 2012 in Moscow. And they've been building them pretty feverishly and they're preparing for something. Now, I would assume they're preparing for war. Um, there's even some discussion about some of the bunkers that were uh, built during the days that Bill Clinton was president back in the 90s up in the hills of Russia. And there's there's discussion that people are starting to head in that direction. And I don't know who those people are, uh, if that's part of the elitist in Russia or what. Or Russia just may... You know, if Russia is going to launch an attack, let's say, in Poland or one of the Baltic states or, or U Ukraine or something, then I can understand they would prepare their citizens for the uh, for the repercussions of a war that might they might wage with NATO. And that's if they are going to do it. I don't even know if they're going to do it. So it's really weird. Now, we've got, I just want you guys to know on Periscope, that we had Mike around the world on our live broadcast on Thursday, and he talked about the reason they're preparing is for biotoxin chemicals, weaponry. And he confirmed that there has been already 12 bodies that have been found between Germany and Iran of people who had been infected with this biochemical uh, virus that kills you after a few days. But when you first get it, it lays dormant in your body and you can spread it, the incubation period. Uh, they're still not sure how long it is, maybe as much as 42 days. And that one of the reports are that they're gonna infect migrant uh, refugees coming into different countries n willingly. And then they'll spread that around as much as they can before they succumb to this virus I mean that was I don't know but I just want to say I'm praying for all you guys in Europe and in the whole world for that matter because we are on the brink of the beast all right something very ugly is going to rise I'm going to be preaching about this today in our live broadcast uh, our Sunday morning service actually you might want to watch it if you at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com we'll be live and uh enjoy the service today and tonight we will we will we may actually get Stephen ben the noon back on the phone even then, no matter how late it is in the czech republic or we might put my, we might bring mike around the world on or bp earth watch i might bring them all three on this is how serious things are getting okay heidi what else going on you have somebody wanting to be saved well god bless you that's the right thing to do and let's pray right now, all right? Let's call upon the name of Jesus. Anyone out there watching, just pray. And as a matter of fact, you can pray along with me or you can repeat after me, okay? Just pray and just ask Jesus into your heart. Say, Father, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God and I'm calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my heart and to save me because I believe I believe that Jesus is the Messiah I believe Jesus is the Son of God I believe that he died on the cross and I believe that he rose from the dead I believe that he ascended into heaven and I believe he's coming back again soon and very soon. I want to be ready, Lord. And so I'm praying today. I'm repenting today. I'm confessing my sins. And I'm asking Christ into my life through faith in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I am saved. I am saved. 
by faith to God's wonderful grace. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Who is it, Heidi, that was praying with us? Do we have a name there? I can't see well enough. It's hard to see. God bless you. Welcome. I don't know what country you're from or what state in America, wherever you are coming from, but God bless you. Lefty, they're telling me. His name's Lefty. His name is Driving. Uh, but we'll be in touch with you guys today. Stay with us. Stay with us right here on this Periscope. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, stay with this YouTube channel. All right? God bless. Until you rid the world of all of these things. You're saying this in your soul. You're saying the same thing. When it says, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? In order to say that, you took no action of your own against somebody. You followed the steps of your Savior, and you didn't even know it. The Savior did not take vengeance upon himself and do away with anybody who did anything against him, did he? And you're following the same steps. You've been made specifically privy to what it is, to what it is to endure something and not be able to have vengeance until the vengeance is taken away. Then you seek a type of goodness and repair in their lives, and the Lord takes up your cause. The only reason they could ever holler this out, that their souls are crying this out, and the Lord will not do away with them is because what they're saying they are justified to say you see they truly believed in the scripture where it said I will repay saith the Lord they truly believed in the scripture that said vengeance is mine saith the Lord they truly loved their brother and their sister and their enemy and they did not seek on their own any recompense for the activities that one did against them and so they endured, and many of you have endured, and from the soul, you too are saying, Lord, how long will it be? Because you're seeing horrors in the world, and you're saying, how long will it be? Because you're in right standing in order to say this. If you have sought no vengeance on your own, this very statement will be in your heart, not vengeance. Many people tried to teach you and trick you into believing that's a weakness. No, that's a strength. It's very easy to exact vengeance. It's an animalistic response. It's very simple to be an animal. It's very simple to attack. It's very simple to fight. It's not so simple to ignore the natural nature of the flesh and continue in your spiritual walk. Overpowering the instinct of the flesh and the easy path you didn't take the easy path and you didn't even know it that's the love of the father upon your life many of you that have been abused you've been set up to truly make it do you know that you've been set up to make it from the beginning and you're stronger than the strongest people out there because it takes a lot of strength not to exact vengeance. Some of the smallest creatures on earth, by the way, are the most venomous. Not the big creatures on earth. All right? Folks, if you can bear with me just for a moment, I'm going to have a, I have a small interruption. I'll be right back. I can perceive I'll have a few of these. I'll be right back, though. Our Father said we're to obey His laws and His ways. These 66 books have nothing to do with religion. Let me take a drink of common sense here real quick. Okay, thank you everybody for your endurance with me. If you guys can put up with me, you can put up with anybody. If the Muslims hate the Jews so much, how come there's <clears throat> all the synagogues aren't being burned down in Europe? Or in the United States of America, Obama just brought in 10,000 more Sunni Syrians into the United States and put them on the back of the taxpayers. 10,000 one drop. Plus, he's bringing them in yet from Somalia and Jordan and Yemen. He's bringing them in from another 10, 12 countries that the controlled Jews news isn't telling you about. But I know. <laughs> That's a fact.
Okay, back to what we were speaking of. So, now, you are one of those ones whose souls are crying out like this, which means, see, there's something very special about this, because your soul cries out for these things also, right? And, and don't get me wrong, this part where it says, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Right? Don't get me wrong, this is not a hateful statement. This is a statement through a person who's recognizing them and have, has felt in their lifetime a multitude of evil. How many of you... You feel, even in your own families, like a punching bag. How many of you men feel that way? Right? How many of you are in the company of somebody else who does not comprehend your giving heart? And they will always take it the wrong way. How many of you feel that way? Right? These things. Now listen, I'm encouraging you never to take matters into your hands. You're a representative of a kingdom. There's no need for you to do that. But continue on the path, and yes, you have to endure. But the time is coming, and your reward comes with it. But you have to stay the course. Don't let anyone persuade you to turn away and to take any matters in your own hands, but you continue to be a representative in the earth. And remember what the Lord went through. Take up your cross daily. You're not the only one in this situation, and that puts you in a very special family. But it's not that many. Can everybody understand that? This is very rare these days. You be encouraged. I absolutely understand what I'm speaking of tonight. Be encouraged and stay the course. Because you're looking out into the world and you're remembering the abuses even upon your own heads. And the reason why you remember is because you see it happening to other people all the time. You stay the course. When your family, because you don't really say anything, when they pick you out and all the heaviness goes upon you, you stay the course. You keep going and you stay the course because you're having a breakthrough and you don't yet perceive it. But these are just steps. You continue to, be, to continue to be a representative of the true kingdom of God, not the fake one. To the rest of Judeo-Christianity and the Catholic Church and the Hindus and the Muslims and the wood worshippers and the stone worshippers and the players with the beads and all this other stuff, they go to a building of wood, stone, or clay and, and they go to their church. They don't realize that we are the living church of Yahweh. Your fight is a worthy fight. You're fighting. You're fighting the good fight of faith. How many of you understand what the good fight of faith is? These folks in the fifth seal certainly fought the good fight of faith. And let me explain it to you. As much as I can, as much as that I have walked through, there are many times in your lives when you see everybody else but yourself doing something in a certain way. And it seems like what you're doing is counterproductive, but what you're doing is what the Lord asked of you to do. And it seems like it is not working, but it's setting you back. Don't you worry about that. You keep fighting the good fight of faith, which is, under all circumstances, keep your belief in every single word that came out of the mouth of Jesus of Nazareth. You keep your belief in those words and upon him, the person, him, the savior and him the king of kings stay steadfast upon him don't yield yourself to what looks profitable but stay in the path that you've been set on see that is the good fight of faith there is no other good fight out there but there is the good fight of faith and you will face times, and many of you have, and some people failed. Many of us failed in our fight, but that's okay. You get back up, and you begin to fight again to keep your belief in every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Jesus of Nazareth. You see, when your circumstances 
When you begin to perceive the world and your circumstances are unfavorable to you, there are many times you feel that if you just do A or B, which is not quite, it's not holy to do that, but it can deliver you, you've got to fight not to do them. You've got to fight not to be delivered by A and B, but to stay the course with the Lord. And you've got to fight to keep the faith and to keep your belief in every word that he said. You have got to fight the good fight of faith in truth. Many have taken the broad path. A broad path is simply something you are familiar with. Something that worked in your life before. But you're in a brand new place. You're on a boat in the middle of a storm. You've not been in this type of storm before. And there's but one savior in this storm. It is not the boat. It's not 911. It's not the Coast Guard. It is Jesus of Nazareth. He's the only one that can speak to the storm and get you to your destination. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. These folks, these beautiful people, and the fifth seal fought the good fight of faith. They did not seek revenge. Because their statements reveal who they were in earth. Your soul will not cry out these things. If you have taken revenge. And you will certainly not be underneath the altar. Your soul is not going to be underneath God's altar. If you have sought things for yourself here on this earth, no, they were punching bags. They fought the good fight of faith. They finished the race and they were killed. Let me give you an example of being killed. Many people think of this and they look at beheadings. They look at the physical side. Let me explain something to you. Many of us in here, I'm included. We have been dying daily in the flesh. I'm not talking about subduing your flesh. I'm speaking of the fight, the fight of faith, the good fight of faith. There's a cost. Many of us go hungry. There's a cost. Many of us are wore down in our bodies by the sickening things we see in the world. There's a cost. Many of us are sacrificed ourselves for the sake of another. There is a cost. Some of us are sick, yet we refuse to quit. There's a cost. And the world is heaping up on us pressure after pressure. How does the world do that? Because the world is inspired by the hidden entities they can't see. Those same hidden entities speak to mankind of the world. And men of the world come against you, even in your own families. How many people can see that? So then your war is truly not against the flesh, but those things who inspire the flesh, which are the entities behind the entire show here. And they will send person after person. And this is precisely why one person can utter something to you that hurts you deeply. And as soon as you let your guard down, a stranger will speak the exact same phrase that hurts you deeply. Why? Because it was inspired by evil itself. It was inspired by darkness itself. And darkness does not die. It has many vessels out there can send your way to utter the same phrase. And so long as it continues to work in your life, they will continue to utter that same statement. But the day you actually understand the nature of this war, they will no longer be able to utter anything through anyone that ever gets to you again. But they will never stop killing you. They will never stop killing you. Now what I mean by that, I'm not talking about a mortal death. I'm talking about slowly but surely wearing out the saints of the most high. Need I remind everyone that we live in the times where Satan will wear out the saints of the most High, because power is given unto him to do so. And many people look away from this. They, they don't want to read that part. 
You see, what they're doing is they're clinging to the good parts of the scripture and throwing away the absolute fact of the scriptures. But it's not going to ever kill your soul. But you've been worn out. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. Listen, you would never have to fight the good fight of faith if nothing had power over you. You would never be sick if anything in this earth did not have power over your flesh. There's one thing that's meaningless to you, and it is death itself. There is no death to you. You have everlasting life through your faith in Christ, and that is spiritual. You're in a womb, ladies and gentlemen. You're not born yet, and in the womb, you have a lot of growing pains. One day, and one day soon, you're about to be born. There are viruses and all sorts of things inside the womb, and you have to have an immunity, or you will be born with diseases, and you will die. The immunity are your trials and tribulations that make you worthy of the birth you're about to have, because you're not born yet. You're still in the womb. This is not it. This is the womb. And there's afterbirth in the womb that will be discarded. Do you understand? And once you are born into eternal life, right, that you perceive then as your new reality, your true first breaths in a brand new form, then you're born. Everything in the womb seems to be against you, but some things are nourishing, others are not, just like a baby in the womb. Please understand me in this that God spoke the word first and then creation came so then everything in creation models his word understand that that's why you hear terms like birth pains that's why you hear the references to the processes in life itself this is God's creation this is our father's creation, but the word came first. It came first and your soul was crying out. So continue to fight the good fight of faith. Spiritually, some of you are underneath this altar spiritually. And there's a certain number that will die physically that must be met. But spiritually, some of you are underneath this altar. And you're still fighting the good fight of faith. Let nothing deter you to make you stop fighting the good fight of faith. Nothing. Do not take it, take it upon yourselves to say that your way is the established way, but rather say the way of my Lord is the way of my life. Fully adopt his ways and discard your own ways. There are many traps Lord knows we're going through a political cycle that is like a vacuum. It's like a power vacuum for Christians. All these things in the earth that are happening, ladies and gentlemen, do you not know they're against the Christians? Did you forget that everything in this world that Satan is doing is formulated against the Christians? The ones who believe in Jesus Christ? They're not going to mess with anybody else. It's a show. When evil destroys evil, it's a show. They're after your soul. Where is your soul? Hmm? Is your soul in the confines of the hands of our Father? Everything that Lucifer is doing is to consume your soul. This entire fight is against your soul. That's why you can't afford to let down your guard. How many of you have noticed, certainly during the last five years, the moment you think you can relax, is the moment Satan comes against you like a flood. And do you know why he does that? Because you're not sent here to relax. That's why. Your relaxation should be walking in the will of God. You should never tire of being in the will of God. If you ever grow tired of being in the will of God, you were not in the will of God, but you were in your own will. You can only get tired of your own plans. There's no way anybody can ever become tired within the will of God because it is he that quickens you. So how can one ever be tired in the flesh or spiritually? 
it is he that quickens the flesh. And that's according to your walk. I'm not telling you something I think I know. I'm telling you something that I have to live by. Listen, if I didn't live by these things, I would have been dead a long time ago. I know for me there is no choice. If I ever thought about going backward, demons would destroy me. I'm going forward and they still try to destroy me. They have tried so many ways to destroy me, to discourage me, to dissuade me. But I'm too stubborn to listen to them. Their voices, right? I'm never intimidated by voices. I'm not intimidated by the flesh. There's nothing they can do to me. What does intimidate me is my own stupidity in ever thinking about deviating from the will of God. To ever think that I know the perfect will of God. To ever take up my own mantle and say, I've got it. I'm going to walk in my own. That would be ignorance, foolish, and a death sentence for me. You see, the Father's way is established. I found out that all you need to do is surrender yourself and follow his will. When you're in his will, your life is not the same. Yes, you are a target. And that's why it was said, after a person has tasted of the goodness of the Holy Spirit and then they fall away, it's impossible for that person to ever come back. When you're in the will of God, trust me, you desire to be nowhere else. If you found the kingdom of God, you will go and tell the entire world, hey, I know where the kingdom is. Israel is not a land mass. That's a bunch of hokey pokey. That's from the dark side again of lying to you, trying to engage you into that political and religious spectrum. And the kingdom was never a place. The kingdom was always present, which is why the angels in Matthew, when the angels come down and they separate the wheat from the tear, they take the tares out of the kingdom. Ah, so the tares are in the kingdom also. Yes, they are. In a superficial sense, they're in the kingdom, but the kingdom has always been established. It's an everlasting kingdom. It never was going to come. It's already been here. When it says thy kingdom come, you really have to understand the context of that prayer. Thy kingdom come, come where? Because it already exists. Come where? To flood the earth with the ways of the Lord. Do you understand that now? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And certainly for the one praying that the kingdom come in my life, in your life. Is the kingdom in your life? What did happen in that battle in the heaven that we can read about that is only written only in three verses in Revelations 12, 7 to 9? What really happened? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. A battle in the heaven. Thereupon a great battle took place in heaven, and Michael the archangel made ready for the battle. And the army of heaven was drawn up in battle array. And Yahweh said, Come ye, let us see. And thus saying, he inspected the whole of it. He inspected the whole gathering of the starships. For it says there's over 12 to 14 different kind of starships, but it never has said how big they are. Let's continue. And he's looking at this great, vast, galactic army up in the heavens that John wrote about. Then Sataniel, Satan, the most mighty of Yahweh's angelic creation, rose up with the Gregory of the fifth level of heaven and made war upon Yahweh. And Yahweh issued his commands to Michael, his archangel. And Michael tendered obedience and rose up to fight and his troops consisted of 12 times 10,000 horsemen, 60 times 10,000 men of the shield, 70 times 10,000 armor-clad warriors mounted on horses of fire, starships, and 70 times 10,000 warriors with torches of fire, and 80 times 10,000 warriors armed with daggers of fire, 
lasers, and 100 times 10,000 slingers of stone, and 50 times 10,000 bearers of axes of fire, and 30 times 10,000 bearers of crosses of light, and 40 times 10,000 bearers of blazing torches or lamps. That was a mighty fighting force. A few million. <clears throat> and all the eager combatant angels uttered loud cries, and they began to fight. But Sataniel, Satan, broke their ranks, and they took to flight. And they charged the enemy again, and Satan again broke them again, and they fled. Satan had the Gregory that Enoch told you about. And when they charged the third time, Yahweh gave them a cross of light. A cross of light is perpetual energy. Perpetual energy force is the ancient circle with a cross completely through it, which is a signification of massive frequency energy. These are already seen and discovered all over the world, and they are beginning to be understood. Let us continue. And when they charged the third time, Yahweh gave them a cross of light whereupon was inscribed a name or a sign which read, In the name of Yahweh. And when Satan saw that inscription, he was vanquished. And Michael the archangel cast him down. Now we're into Revelations 12, verses 7 to 9. And he and all his host who were banded with him betook themselves to flight. And it is clearly written in the conflict of Adam and Eve, the book of Adam and Eve, translated from the Ethiopic as such in chapter 14, as the entire book is written in chapters. Yes, I have these books. Yes, I have read them and I understand them. Chapter 14, page 17, Then Adam said unto Yahweh, O Yahweh, Take you my soul, and let me not see this gloom on this earth anymore, or remove me to some place where there is no darkness. But Yahweh said to Adam, because Adam did something, didn't he? Right. Yeah. He sinned, didn't he? Right. Are you in the kingdom? Because if you ever found the kingdom, no one could ever talk you out of leaving it. There's all safety inside the kingdom. How does one find the kingdom of God? You have to fully abide in Christ. Stop saying, I want Jesus to be on my side. And you simply go and follow him. Go follow him. Don't follow the linguistics of what you have been taught and all these trick words that play psychological tricks on your mind. Follow the Lord and be on the Lord's side. Do it the right way. Doesn't that make a huge difference? Listen to this. Does that make a huge difference? Instead of saying, Jesus is on my side. No, because you're calling him to yourself. How about you, out of obedience, out of your surrendering, go to be with him. Go follow him. He did never once did he say, Peter, I'm going to follow you. That's not what he said. He said, come follow me. Do you see what that does? If you say it backward, to say that Jesus is on my side is to deify yourself. Like anything you do, Jesus is going to back it up. But when you say, no, I must be on the Lord's side, that's a surrendering statement. Do you see the difference? Now, psychologically, that makes a huge difference in your life. Because to say you're going to be on the side of Christ, as soon as you say this, that, that, that thought of surrendering comes to mind. But when you say Jesus is going to be on my side, there is no surrender. There's only a smile and a false confidence. I'm really going to find a harsh lesson in this because they don't want to surrender. Truthfully, if a person surrendered... They wouldn't have a bunch to say. If a person truly surrendered, they would not speak out of self. 
Please think about that. Who has fully surrendered? I'll tell you what, those who are underneath the altar and the fist seal, Lord knows they surrendered. And they were killed. Paul was dying daily. Paul was. He was dying daily. He was fighting the good fight of faith. Dying daily. The Lord said, die to your flesh daily. Didn't he? And wouldn't you know it that when you read that, you begin to do that. You begin to ignore the desires of your flesh. And you begin to adopt the principles of the kingdom and what the Lord wants. See, every time you desire to walk in the will of God, you continue to surrender. You surrender everything about yourselves. Here's the process you've been through, just to make it simple for you. You have tried everything in your life to make something happen. And it never worked. You only got yourselves deeper in trouble. You've tried every single way that others, you've seen something work in somebody else's life and it never worked for you. Because the Lord conveyed to you right through that, son or daughter, there is no way that's going to work for you because you are mine. Except the way that I've already established. And all he told us to do was find it. How do you find the way of the Lord? By surrendering everything that you are. It's a cycle, isn't it? How many times do we have to fail before we find out our way does not work? Even when we get into a panic due to circumstances and situations, the first thoughts that hit your mind is something familiar with you because you want a quick fix. So I have another advisement for you. Stop looking for quick fixes and trust in the Lord your God. You already know that servitude in the kingdom requires patience. If you have no patience, you've not been trained properly. Patience, patience, it really does tell what you have received of the Lord in your life because the one with lots of patience has received a lot from the Lord. They have truly surrendered many things. The one without patience still wants their way established. Uh oh, I stepped on some toes, then don't worry. I step on my own toes on these these things that I'm speaking to you about. Because some have wrote me and said, Oh wow, you just have such wisdom. No, I do not. It, it's it's no, it's not about that. You know what it's about? Analyzing your own life. Every time. I establish something, I catch myself thinking, I want to do this, and I'll analyze it and say, why in the world am I thinking about that? And I'll begin to purge myself of those things. See, when you begin to purge yourself, you look deeper into your own life, you find the root. You'll find little imps and demons hiding in places you never thought you had. In the body of Christ, I will go so far as to say, you're getting advised from a host of demons that you don't even know because you've made friends with them. Somebody's out there saying, he, oh, that's just not true. Really? Then how could you ever be led astray? You would never go astray. You would never be upset. You would never work out of your own will. It is not within man to order his own steps. His steps are ordered. But from what kingdom are they ordered? Your mind is full of thoughts. You ever lay down in the bed at night? When you're having a rough day, you, you have an uncertain tomorrow. What do you think about? You're nervous about how you're going to do it. That's your problem. You're always thinking about how you're going to do it. And you won't relinquish that and say, wait a minute, I'm a child of God. He already said he's going to supply my needs according to his riches and glory. See, you've got to actually confront these little imps that are talking in your mind. You're going to fall prey to him. And it's a vicious cycle. And you need not have one of these vicious cycles in your life. Those things take up your time. You don't, nothing is prospered by uh, entertaining them in thought. You don't entertain Lucifer. It, the Bible tells us resist the devil and he will flee from you. It never said entertain him. Don't listen to him. 
do not contemplate upon him. Some of you folks, let me tell you how you contemplate. <clears throat> you could think highly of an individual, right? Somebody calls you on the phone or sends you a message and they say, well, I think this person, and they speak the exact negative thing that causes you to be skeptic. And now you can no longer look at the person in favorability because somebody sowed a seed of negativity. Does God sow seeds of negativity? No, he does not. Because guess what? He came for the sinners, not for the saints. He came for the unsaved. He came for the blind. He came for the crippled. And until he comes back again, that is still the calling. But you're receiving suggestions through imps. Let me share something else with you. It doesn't matter who you are. If anybody is weak, one of these entities can plant seeds in your thoughts. And you will speak them and spread that disease. Are you aware of this? You will echo what you have heard. These imps can use anybody in a moment of weakness. Don't deceive yourselves. Half the thoughts in your head do not come from you. You have evil desires, yes, because the Lord said men's hearts are, were continually evil at the time and still are today. That's why they like war so much. That's proof of concept right there, war. They want to fight everything, but they won't fight the good fight of faith. They won't fight to stand still like the Lord said. But they, it's easy to fight directly another individual and to become angry with heated conversations. Who's going to fight to take captive their thoughts? Who's going to cast down imaginations? Who's going to say, no, the Lord said vengeance is mine, therefore that will not enter into my heart. See, if you take your thoughts captive, it will not enter into you. If it does not enter into you, your soul is okay. And what did Jesus say? In your patience, possess ye your souls. So what's the opposite? If you have no patience, you're not going to keep your soul. That means in your patience, keep your soul. Uh-oh, that's exactly what it means. In your patience, keep your soul. If you have no patience, you have rejected the training of the Lord in your life. Period. You can't sugarcoat that. There is, and, and don't go to the psychological books. Stop looking for answers to your life from the kingdoms of darkness. You're a new creature in Christ, I can assure you. None of these external books have the answers for your new existence. There's but one. Those are the words that proceeded out of the mouth of Jesus of Nazareth. You are a new creature in Christ. And if you're a new creature, there is not a book of man that can help you. There are only the words of God that will guide you. To stop going to behavioral science books. Stop depending on psychology. Stop edifying yourself by thinking you know the answer. Stop priding yourself on having a confidence of tomorrow. That's foolish. It is extremely foolish to smile today because you have confidence in tomorrow. That's based in a lie. Many people do that. They'll say, ooh, I have enough money to pay my bills, and they will sit and relax. That's very foolish. That's a foolish way to live. And some of you are tossed just like the waves because of that. You need to fight the good fight of faith. Your Lord and Savior said, take no thought of tomorrow, for today holds enough trouble for itself. So why are you taking confidence in a day that's not promised to you? Is that not foolish? That's foolish. That is man's confidence. Consequently, that's why everybody is trying to figure God out. Because they have a confidence in assurances. Your assurance is supposed to be by faith in the unseen. Jesus of Nazareth. That's called faith. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. What is the substance of things hoped for? The substance is the word of the living God. Jesus of Nazareth and what he said is substance. The evidence of things not seen internally you bear witness to the truth. And the truth was spoken by our Lord. That 
is faith. And when one does believe in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, they believe in what Jesus said. They believe in what he did. They believe his story. And your life will never be tossed. My Lord, it will never be tossed. You don't have to go another day with your life going backwards and forwards. And no, I don't speak things that are popular. Because popularity is foolishness. Certainly to the Lord. Anything mankind has accomplished is foolishness to the Lord. People are drifting during these days. And once they drift far enough, their Lord will appear. Figures like the Mahdi. He will appear. And guess where he comes from? Out of the earth. Don't you know that? The prophecy is he will come out of a well. Do you understand how close the events are? All these peace-loving people out there, right? Oh, we have to get along. I'm going to change your way of thinking. Can I do that? Just me. <clears throat> because a lot of people say, well, you know, we have to get along with the Muslims. Let me, let me tell you something. Anybody who denies Jesus has come in the flesh is Antichrist. It does not matter if it's religion or not. They are Antichrist. And if they're anti-Christ, they're in trouble. There is no bridging the gap. When the Mahdi rises, anybody who is serious about the Muslim religion is going to join sides with their deity. And their deity, the characteristics, matches the Antichrist perfectly. Does that make sense to you guys? So stop pointing and saying, this guy's the Antichrist, this guy's the Antichrist. The Mahdi character matches the antichrist perfectly am i saying that's the absolute character no i am not i'm saying stop accusing people of being the antichrist you're wasting your time the antichrist will be revealed but don't destroy yourselves in the process because listen let me tell you how satan works can i tell you this and you this is why you have to walk in the spirit you have to be mindful of those things in the spirit because if you are busy accusing someone who is innocent you are the one at fault you're the one standing against god yahweh said to adam verily i say unto you this darkness will pass from you every day i have determined for you until the fulfillment of my covenant when I will save you and I will bring you back again into the garden and into the abode of light you long for where there is no darkness. Father Yahweh told us what the name of that place was. It's referred to as the kingdom of heaven. But Father Yahweh on the tree of the cross said it's also called paradise. You're passing a judgment God did not pass, so you're out of alignment with Him. Now you have a penalty over your head because you're being willingly ignorant of the truth. You know not to do that, you do it anyway. Why? Out of emotion. People do that to have their place with humanity. Stop looking for a place in these dark kingdoms. Stop doing it before it's too late you will die if you desire to be a part of these kingdoms you will die jesus came that you may have life and have life more abundantly but you're playing with death whenever a person seeks popularity with those who are like-minded and they join in with the accusations of others against anybody you are guilty as charged Haven't you read the scripture that even the angels didn't bring accusation against Lucifer when they disputed over the body of Moses? Now why is that in the Bible? Michael, an archangel, did not bring accusation against Lucifer. The only thing he said was, the Lord rebuked you. That's all he said. And why did he say that? Because the Lord has already rebuked Lucifer. And 
Michael is truly one of the sons of God. So what are we doing? Accusing anybody. If we sit there and say the scriptures, we war. Not against the flesh, but in principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And why do we constantly point at everybody saying they're the Antichrist? Every presidential election, somebody's going to be the Antichrist. Haven't you noticed? I will bring it, you to it, in the kingdom of heaven. Again said Yahweh unto Adam, all this misery that you have been made to take upon you because of your transgression will not free you from the hand of Satan and will not save you. The church in America is going to suffer so terribly. And we laugh now, but they will come after us, they will come after our children. They will close the net around us while we are playing soccer mom and soccer dad. But we are arguing over so many little things and mesmerized by so many trinkets. The net even now is closing around you and your children and your grandchildren and it does not cause you to fear. You will be isolated from society as has already happened. Anyone who tries to run for office who actually believes the Bible will be considered a lunatic until finally we are silenced. We will be called things that we're not and persecuted, not for being followers of Christ, but for being radical fundamentalists who do not know the true way of Christ, which of course is love and tolerance. You'll go down as the greatest bigots and haters of mankind in history. They've already come after your children, and for most of you, they got them. They got them through the public schools and indoctrination in the university and indoctrination. And then you wonder why your children come out not serving the Lord. It's because you fed them right into the devil's mouth. So little by little, the net is closing around. And then it's not little by little. Look how fast things are going downhill just in a matter of weeks. A matter of weeks. But at the same time, know this. Persecution is always meant for evil, but God always means it for good. And is it not better to suffer in this life to have an extra weight of glory in heaven? You must settle this in your mind. This is the one thing I want to say over and over. Do not believe. Down through history, you have a wrong idea of martyrdom and persecution. You think that these men were persecuted and martyred for their sincere faith in Jesus Christ. That was the real reason, but no one heard that publicly. They were martyred and they were persecuted as enemies of the state, as bigots as narrow-minded, stupid people who had fallen for a ruse and can contribute nothing to society. Your suffering will not be noble. So your mind must be filled with the Word of God when all people persecute you and turn on you. And if the Spirit of God in common grace pulls back and you see even your children and your grandchildren tossing in the lot that you should die. This is no game. You want revival and awakening, but know this. For the most part, great awakenings have come only preceding great national catastrophes or the persecution of the church. I believe God is bringing a great awakening, but I believe that He is raising up young men who are strong in trust in the providence of God to be able to wade through the hell that's going to break loose on us. And it will be on us before we even recognize it. Unless, unless in God's providence, He is not done. He is not done. And note, this is, this is not silly talk. Apart from a great awakening, these things are going to come upon you. Be ready to lose your homes, your cars, and everything. Father Yahweh said, in the end day, the arm of flesh will not save my people. Just as Yahweh had to intervene and help Michael in that great battle, that galactic battle of Revelations 12, 7 and 9, Yahweh will directly intervene as says the book of Enoch, that angelic being shall descend upon the earth and fight alongside the children of light and annihilate the children of darkness who offend Yahweh. The same as it is in the heavens, so shall it be upon the earth.